All right, we will continue looking at other angle relationships and circles. And um, so far we've talked about inscribed angles and central angles. So we've talked about angles that have the vertex on the center and angles whose vertex are on the actual circle. So now we're going to explore some more interesting angles, things that look like this. So what happens if I have two cores create crisscross each other inside of the circle? And so we create an angle that is inside the circle, but notice that it's not necessarily on the center. Okay, so here's the angle that I'm trying to figure out. All right, so that angle X is actually going to be the sum of these two intercepted arcs because keep in mind we have vertical angles here right so both of those angles are going to be the same so we're going to use both of those arcs together and then we're going to average them so we're going to add them together divide by two and that's how we find the measure of an angle that's inside of the circle all right another way you can say that this is just another diagram so you could say that this angle one is going to be the measure of DC plus AB divided by 2, or likewise, you could say the measure of angle 2 is going to be these two arcs AD plus BC added together and divided by 2. So that's inside the circle. You get a little bit of practice. So this angle X is going to be 1 half of 112 plus 140. So that's going to be one half of, let's say that would be 252. So that would equal 126. So x would be equal 126. So you can uh, try this one on your own. So x would equal one half of 40 plus 120, which is going to be one half of 160, which would be 80 degrees. All right, so adding the two arcs together when the angle is inside. This one is going a little bit backwards, so now we're trying to find the arc. All right, this angle is 52, but notice that that's not the intercepted arc from X. All right, so this is the angle that intercepts that. So I need to do my 180 minus my 52, and that'll give me 128 here. So 128 is my arc, or is my angle measure, rather, and that'll be 1 half of x plus 144. Okay, so you can either distribute the 1 half or multiply by the 2. I'm going to multiply by the 2, and that gives me 256 equals x plus 144 and then subtract the 144 and you get 112. So x, the arc, would be 112 degrees. So now let's look at angles that are outside of the circle. So their, vert their vertex is outside of the circle and this is formed when we either have two secants, so that's like this first diagram, or I could have one secant and one tangent, or I could have two tangents. So either way, it doesn't really matter. That vertex is outside of the circle. Now the nice thing is, is we're still worried about what are the intercepted arcs. So we have arcs that these secants and tangents cut off. So notice in this one, this one might be harder to see. This one starts here, and then the other arc joins where that one leaves off. And then this one has the whole circle, but it's still important to know how many degrees each section of that circle is. All right, so this, so we're going to be subtracting those. So if any time the angle is outside, instead of adding them and dividing by two, I'm going to be subtracting those intercepted arcs. So obviously, since we want a positive angle, we'll do the bigger arc minus the smaller arc. Okay, and then. We're averaging them, so make sure to divide by 2. Um, here is another diagram. If you'd rather write it that way, you can write it that way as well. 
All right, so practice. So if I wanted to define this, this arc measure x, okay, and they gave me this angle that is outside, so 78 is going to be equal to the 204 degrees minus the x divided by 2. So again, I'm going to get rid of that 2 by multiplying both sides by 2. I'm going to add the x over and subtract the 156. So that would give me x is 48 degrees. This time I have x as the angle, so I'm trying to find the angle. And they only gave me that this is 96 degrees. But we do know that a full circle is 360, so I can do 360 minus 96, and I would get 264 degrees for this larger arc. So x is going to be equal to 1 half of 264 minus 96. So if we do that, 264 minus 96 is 168. And then divide that by 2, and then we get x equals 84 degrees. And then in this last one, we have x is the larger arc. And we have the small angle and then the small intercepted arc. So 17 is equal to 1 half. Large arc is x. The smaller one is 42 degrees. So again, I'm going to multiply by 2. So 34 is equal to x minus 42. Now I'm going to add the 42. And then I'm getting x is equal to 76 degrees. All right, so anytime that angle is outside of the circle, then we're going to subtract the arcs and divide by 2. All right, now we could also have a chord and a tangent. So this is what that looks like. So here I have a chord and a tangent. Okay, so here notice that it's only cutting off one single arc. Okay, so I don't have to do anything with that arc. That's just going to be one half the measure of that arc. This is going to be very similar to an inscribed angle. All right, so an inscribed angle, remember those look like this, and we would just do one half of that intercepted arc. Well, that's going to be the same for this. So again, if the vertex is on the circle, then all you're doing is taking half of that intercepted arc. Notice here in this other diagram, I have two angles that I could use. I could use this angle one and use that red arc and take half of it. Or I could try to find the measure of angle 2, that one, and do half of that arc. All right, notice that those would, end, would be supplementary, 1 and 2, because they make a straight line on that tangent. I'm going to skip down to this one. BC is tangent to the circle, and we need to find the measure of angle CBD. Okay, so that angle, 3x, is going to be one half of the intercepted arc, which they're giving us is 4x plus 50. So I'm going to distribute the one half this time since these are both even. So that'll be 2x plus 25. Subtract the 2x, and I get x equals 25. Now, they didn't ask me to find x. They asked me to find the measure of angle CBD. So the measure of angle CBD is going to be equal to 3 times x. So that's going to be 75 degrees. So we've got more angles to keep track of and make sure that you know when to add, when to subtract, or when to just do a half.